Okay friends, before we get started, it's a good idea to make sure that you flush your cooling system. That way there, when we put everything back together and we start adding, it's gonna be fresh new coolant. To get started on our job, first thing we have to do is drain the coolant. So we're gonna get underneath the passenger side. While you're under here, you might happen to notice that you have some plastic shields. A lot of ours are either broken or missing, but if you look under yours and you see a big old shield under here, just look to see where the mounting bolts are and remove them all. Once your shields are out of the way, we're gonna drain the coolant. Now that the shields are out of the way, let's look right up inside the passenger side front bumper. If you look right here where my screwdriver is pointing, you're gonna see the petcock for draining the radiator. So make sure you have a nice collection bucket, hand protection and eye protection, and then let's open that up and let it drain into the collection bucket. So when you open this, you might happen to notice if you open it up slightly, coolant will come out of this area here. If you open it up larger, more than likely it's gonna make a larger mess. So you wanna make sure you have your collection bucket right underneath this area. Well, we have the petcock open. Let's go ahead and open up our radiator cap here. That's gonna allow the coolant to come out a little faster. Set this aside. Once you have these shields down, you also wanna make sure you pull down your side shield inside your right front wheel well as well. With all that out of the way, we have a nice clear view of where our water pump's gonna be. For you, if you're working on the ground, it might be a little bit easier if you remove your right front wheel. If you're gonna do that, make sure you torque it to 100 foot-pounds when you're done the job. Now, before you jump ahead and remove the belt, you wanna come right over here to the water pump pulley. You're gonna find three mounting bolts that hold the pulley to the actual water pump. We're gonna loosen those up just a tiny bit and then we'll remove the belt. Now we need to remove the serpentine belt from the area so that way there we can also remove the water pump. To do that, we're gonna come right up inside this area and you're gonna be able to find the serpentine belt tensioner. I'm just gonna use my tool so I can reach up in here. I'll turn this counterclockwise and that relieves the tension. Now we can just carefully remove the belt. It's a good idea to make sure that you take note of the routing of the belt. That way there, when you put it back on, it'll go the same way. Now that we have the belt off, let's continue by removing the rest of these bolts. There's one, I'll spin that and do the other two. There's our last bolt. Now I'm just going to use a pry bar and carefully pry against the engine. Let's remove that pulley. With the pulley off of there, now it's going to be time to start unbolting it from the engine. There's going to be five mounting points on that. I'll show you on this one. You have one here, up there, one up high that you really can't see from here, and then the other two. All right, I'm just going to use a wrench for the top area here. It's going to be easiest for me. I got a little ratcheting wrench. There's one. Let's do the other four. Last bolt, there's our last bolt. Now with all the bolts out of there, we're just gonna give this a light bonk to break it free. Keep in mind that there should be coolant behind this area and it has to go somewhere. There it is, friends. Now we're just gonna clean down the mounting area. Once you have it wiped down, inspect it. If you see any raised areas or areas that look as though they still have some sort of debris on them, just use a flat razor blade like this and scrape it off. Now it's gonna be time to install our brand new water pump. Of course, when we do that, we're gonna replace the gasket at the same time. You're gonna notice as you line it up, it's gonna line up perfectly like this. If you have it backwards, of course it won't. I'm just gonna hold it together like this, put it up and into the engine. Line that up. Start in two of our mounting bolts, just to hold it for us, and then we'll start the other two. Once we have them all started, we'll snug them up and then torque them to 16 foot-pounds. I'm gonna come over here, do the one on the opposite side. Once you're sure that it's going on nice and level the whole way, just continue on by snugging up the others. 
Now that we have it nice and torqued, let's wipe down our mess in this area. And then we'll grab our pulley and put that on. Now let's install our water pump pulley. First, look at the backside. If you see any buildup on it that seems as though it's raised, you need to continue on by sanding that off first. This is just a stain, so I'm not worried about it. I'll set it up here, line it up, and then I'll start in all of my bolts. Once they're all started, we'll snug them up and then we'll torque them to 80 inch pounds. Okay, got that one snugged. Let's grab our belt. Now it's gonna be time to put on the belt. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to inspect it. Look at the ribbed area. If you see a whole bunch of cracks, you know that you're gonna to wanna to replace it. You also wanna look at the backing. If your backing looks like this and it has a wear out line like that, well, then you know you wanna replace it as well. For the purpose of this instructional video, I'm just gonna show you how to put this belt back on. We'll replace it at a later date. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top to the power steering pump with this one. We'll rest it over the pulley and then we'll start lining up the rest of the pulleys. Once you have it on, double check to ensure it's going over all the pulleys properly. If it looks as though your belt is hanging off of one of them, obviously you're gonna wanna make sure you fix that. Obviously we're gonna double check this again after we start the engine, but before we can do that, let's get back under the hood and add coolant. The next thing that I wanna do is remove this bolt right here and then squeeze this tab so I can remove this container. After that, you can of course empty this out, clean it out, and then you're gonna refill it with brand new coolant. Now it's gonna be time to fill our cooling system. That's gonna be easiest to be done with a system that looks like this, which is essentially a funnel. Other than that, if you don't have the funnel, maybe you have one of those vacuuming contraptions. That's gonna be much better overall, but this is gonna be the one that most people have. I'm just gonna go ahead and add coolant to this. We'll keep filling until it comes approximately halfway up the funnel. Now that we have it like this, the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is run the Jeep for a while. We wanna essentially wait until the cooling fans turn on up in the front right here. You'll be able to hear that. After they turn on, you should happen to notice that there's no more air bubbles coming out of this area. So now that we have this so it's filled up approximately halfway, the next thing that I wanna do is jump inside the Jeep and we're gonna start it up. We're gonna put the heat so the temperature is on hot. And then of course, we're gonna come back out here and we're gonna watch this to ensure it doesn't go empty. While we're watching, we also wanna be listening. We're listening for the cooling fans that come up here. When you hear those turn on, double check to ensure you don't have any more air bubbles coming out of here. And then we can remove this system and put on our radiator cap. Now that it's all done running, let's cap it off. We'll lift it up off of here and put the remainder into our overflow tank, ensuring that it comes up to the maximum. We'll get this off of here and install our radiator cap. Okay, friends, if you removed your wheel, make sure you torque that wheel to 100 foot pounds. Aside from that, start up your Jeep. You're gonna wanna make sure that you have the heat on high. We're gonna take it for a little road test. We wanna watch the temperature gauge on the gauge cluster. If it goes shooting all the way up into the red, you know you've got an issue. If it stays in the normal zone, well then you should be good to go, so have a nice road test.